Hi there, my name is Patrick Lee Briggs. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, today we're going to be looking at preserving whites in your painting. Um, we're going to be painting a very simple seascape, but it's going to, what it's going to teach you is how to leave, the importance of leaving your whites, how to use your brush on, your, on its side to be able to create a lovely broken stroke to get that sort of surf effect of, of a wave, and also how to uh, layer up colours, how to build up the depth of colour on your page, okay, on your paper. So this is the very simple painting we're going to be doing. There's going to be a reference image that will be inserted for you to uh, work along with, should you. And if you want to, uh, the link, it will be under the video uh, for Pixabay, where you can actually pick the uh, reference image up from. Okay, so let's not hang about. Let's get straight into the painting. It's, uh, like I say, it's really important to preserve your whites. Um, using gouache to paint in big areas of white um, on a watercolour is not my idea of you know, fun, really. Um, when you've got the white paper there that you can leave and um, use without any problem. Basically, you've just got a bit of forward planning. You've got to be thinking ahead. And uh, once you've done that, it should be pretty plain sailing. So we're going to jump straight to the actual painting now. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. And uh, there's also a link to my Skillshare courses um, underneath the video. So should you be interested in um, learning more in depth about uh, watercolour painting, then I've got some very in-depth videos on Skillshare, which you can watch, which uh, are rated quite highly and have a good response from people. So if, you, uh, if you're interested in looking at those, please do. The link is under the video. So let's get straight on with the video and uh, let's paint this watercolour. Okay then, I'm just starting off with a mixture of um, Prussian blue and a little bit of cadmium red for the sky. And I'm going to go all the way down to where the wave is and I'm going to use my little Chinese brush now just to start to paint the top of the wave. Now what I'm doing is I'm using the brush on its side. Adding more of the sky. Back to the uh, Chinese brush. Now, just use the brush on its side. There's a little bit too much water on the brush there. That's better. And I'm getting a nice broken edge, just so it represents the top of the the uh, top of the wave. To get that nice broken edge. So just use your brush on its side. Not too much water on it. Not too much paint. And just draw the paint down to get that. Now I didn't get. An absolute perfect wave. I've got to be honest. It for me, I went a bit. I, I pulled the paint in too far. So instead of worrying about it and trying to match the photograph uh, completely, I'll just work with it and uh, make it myself. Make it my own, basically. So I'm not going to worry about not getting a complete match on the wave. Um, run it down, flood it down, and then pull it towards the wave using the side of your brush to break, get that lovely broken effect. Might not look much at this stage, but we're going to put another layer in a minute for the sea, to pull out the sea, and that'll make that wave stand out a little bit more at that point. Now I'm just softening the edges. I'm just drawing some of that colour down into the surf. Just using, again, you can see using the brush on its side, a nice dry brush stroke to create that feeling of surf. And we're not having to use any white paint at all. I'm painting using Arsh 140 pound not surface paper. So the paper's got a nice tooth to it. And I'm using Windsor & Newton, Windsor and Newton Cotman paints. This is a new brush I've brought. It's a Cotman flat sort of uh, brush. It's uh, three quarter inch wide. In all honesty, it's probably a little bit too big for this job, but I just thought I'd use it anyway, just to have a go with it really. And I'm just using the, the corner. Just put, again, I'm not trying to, I'm just getting the feel of the rocks. I'm not trying to match the picture completely. Um, you know, if that's something you feel that compels you and you need to do, where well, you can do that. But for me, I just want to get a complete, you know, uh, an approximate 
feel of the scene. So I'm just using burnt sienna with a little bit of uh, cobalt blue in it, various mixes of that. As you can see, it's warm and cool. And just painting in the rocks. This is the first wash of colour on the rocks. Careful to paint around that one in the foreground because that's going to be a bit more orangey colour. So this is a nice, simple uh, watercolour for beginners. Um, you're learning a few techniques in this painting. Right, so now we're just painting the top of the rock you, using a little bit of cadmium orange and a little bit of cadmium red. Just painting in the shape of the rock. It's a lovely brush this. And when I actually start using it on bigger paintings, I think I'm going to get some really nice effects with it. Really pleased with it. So how simple was that? So basically it was just a various wash of cadmium orange, cadmium red, um, and a little bit of uh, cobalt blue for the water. Okay, for the sea, I'm just using uh, a mix of Prussian blue and Viridian with a touch of cadmium red in there. I'm just going to make sure I get a nice straight horizon. A straight, not too, not ruler straight, but just uh, not, not slanted, going down on a slant if possible. And now again, it's coming back up to the wave, trying to get that nice broken edge again. This, yeah, just where the waves, uh, the surf's coming up, you can just see the actual horizon through there. As you can see, I'm just using this brush on its side. Got to be careful here, I don't eat into the white paper too much now and uh, lose the size of the wave. I wanted that bit to remain that size. You've got to be careful you don't sort of overwork it and reduce, reduce the wave size. I'll get a little bit of lighter green here just uh, for interest. Just put in that nice extra uh, wash of painting for the sea there. You can see it's really started to make that surf pop out and jump out. This is just a little bit of Viridian, Viridian and Cadmium Yellow mix. Just to sort of indicate where the waves are breaking and the surf is coming in. And just using the brush very lightly on the paper, just so it skips over the tooth of the paper. Just so you get those little bits of texture left behind. A little bit of uh, cobalt blue and magenta, just for a little bit of shadow, light bright coloured shadow just the wave just to uh, give it more form and again in the foreground where the waves coming in Try not to take your painting, you know, to really improve at watercolour painting. Uh, well, this is what I found anyway. The minute I started to relax relax into it, um, I found I improved. The minute I, st not, I started not, not really caring what the end result was like, just enjoying the process of watercolour painting, I actually found that I started to improve because I, I loosened up. I, I, I wasn't sort of sitting there praying for a great end result. I, I literally just kind of really didn't care what the end result was like. I just enjoyed mixing paint on the paper and enjoyed painting. Um, 
and that way I found it really helped me improve very quickly and my and my, automatically that made my style become an awful lot looser so uh, I reckon you know don't stress over it enjoy it I'm just adding a few darks here to the rocks just to give them a little bit more form and that's just a little bit of Prussian blue I think and cadmium red and a little bit of viridian green and then here and there it's just a mix of darks from your palette but when you actually paint your work make sure you get your darks in I see an awful lot of paintings that are posted for me to have a look at and often they're beautifully drawn and a lot of work's gone into them but a lot often they're missing the essential darks and uh, it's that balance of light and dark is what gives your painting impact so that's worth checking look back at the reference image or your value sketch whatever you did to prepare for the painting and uh, think well have I got my darks dark enough I know why a lot of people don't put those darks in and that's because they're so worried about ruining the painting but that's how you'll improve by not caring about ruining the painting by literally thinking well I need to do this and I'll give it a go and I really don't care what the end result is it's just another part of the learning process so I'm just putting a bit of shadow in the foreground rock and that's just a mixture of cadmium, or cadmium orange, cadmium red and a bit of cobalt blue. Again, I'm not sort of slavishly worrying about the shape of the rock. As long as I've got it approximate to the painting, nobody's going to be comparing them. I want to relax about this painting and I want to relax about my painting in general. I don't want to be out with a measurement making sure I get everything right um, and I just want to enjoy it now if you're painting a portrait obviously it's important you get the proportions right and the nose in the right and if you're painting somebody's house you want to get the right amount of windows that's important but when you're doing this type of thing you can just relax into it and actually enjoy the process of painting and not worrying about accuracy too much and start to pop the shadows in Again, that's the same mix of cadmium orange, cadmium red and some cobalt blue. Now, this is a painting that anyone could have a go at, you know, whether you're a more advanced painter, maybe you're having trouble with your um, preserving your whites or you're a complete beginner. It's really something you can have a go at. Just starting to build up the textures in the foreground now. Again, that's the same mixture of colours, cadmium red, cadmium orange and cobalt blue. And I just do various mixes of that just to build up the detail on the foreground of the beach. Again, using my brush very lightly, not gripping it like a pencil too much, just holding it very lightly and letting it skip over the page. A few little rocks popping up in the surf. Fancy putting those in. felt those rocks should come down a little bit further there so again I'm using the brush on the side to get a nice broken stroke just so it looks like the water's pushing up against the rocks and when I paint I make sure I paint right off the page don't just paint up to the edge paint right off the page so carry on painting as you go off the page push the brush off the page if, if you can few darks going in here just to 
make those waves stand out a bit. So this painting is ultimately it's got a lovely sort of impressionistic feel to it. It is a sketch, obviously. It's very quick, and uh, you could spend a lot longer over it and get everything a bit more accurate and uh, the wave painted more realistically. But this is very much just a very loose sketch and a good starter painting. That's just a very dark mix of um, Prussian blue and cadmium red and just pop it in to just indicate waves coming in a bit of uh, the swell pushing up against the rocks okay I've just zoomed out a little bit just to give you a better look at the painting so uh, I hope you enjoyed this little demo um, give it a go and I'd like to you can always come to my Facebook page the link is uh, underneath the video and if you want to post your painting on the page, I'd love to see it. Just adding a few final little darks here and there. Got to be careful now I don't fiddle too much. And what we'll do next is just take the tape off and uh, have a look, see what it looks like. OK, there we go. There's the finished painting. Um, yeah, overall I'm quite pleased with it. It's nice and loose, that's what I wanted to get. Really broad brush strokes. I wanted to capture a feeling of light and I really wanted to capture the, the white of the wave. What am I disappointed about? Well, I'm disappointed about that I never got the size of the wave quite right. I would have liked it sort of splashing out a little bit more to the left. But, you know, I didn't want to start worrying too much about that at the time because it would have meant just giving up and then starting a new painting because I'd already painted over the white. Um, but we've managed to create this painting without using any white paint at all. And this is a kind of, in essence, it's the, it's the beauty of watercolour. You know, you can you can utilise the white paper and um, use it to your advantage without using white paint. And it doesn't matter how big your waves are. Maybe in hindsight, I should have preserved some whites out here where that wave's cresting, even though they're not in the picture, just to draw the eye out there a little bit more. And I could have done the same dry brush effect on those. It, I don't have to rely on white paint. I have got white gouache here, but I'm not even tempted to start painting it on those waves there. Uh, because, I, you know, I do use white gouache. I, I've used it in paintings to, to have for highlights, which is sometimes impossible not to lose. But uh, And a lot of people use it very effectively, uh, you know, in, in watercolour. It's part of their technique, which is fantastic. So I'm not saying you shouldn't use it. I'm just saying in this case, when you're painting pictures like this, don't rely on it for your waves. Uh, you can just leave the white paper if you plan ahead in advance. OK, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like and subscribe and check out the links under the video. And thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.